All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So as we get closer to this year's Mr. Olympia, I thought it would be fun to kind of look back and discuss some of the more eventful and more controversial Mr. Olympias throughout history um, and kind of revisit some of these Olympias um, in the weeks leading up to this year's Mr. Olympia. So I wanted to start with this video revisiting the 1980 Mr. Olympia, which was the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Also, it would be Arnold Schwarzenegger's last Mr. Olympia. It would be the end of the bodybuilding career of Mike Menzer at the age of only 29 years old. Um, it would also be one of the most controversial Mr. Olympias in Olympia history, aside from the 1981 Mr. Olympia, the year that followed. Now, why was this Olympia such a controversial one? Well, this was Arnold's comeback Olympia. Arnold had been you know, filming in Hollywood. He had been away for five years. He had retired from bodybuilding at the 1975 Mr. Olympia after winning that show. And nobody really knew that Arnold was coming back in 1980. So that was one of the biggest things that really took people by surprise is the fact that Arnold was even there. In fact, he was telling competitors backstage, um, by the way, I'm competing. So nobody knew Arnold was doing the show until he showed up the night of the show. And at the time, Arnold was actually filming a documentary. So he had a camera crew following him around backstage. Um, and the fact that he didn't tell anybody he was competing until the day of the show, it just seemed to rub a lot of competitors the wrong way, um, the way that Arnold had gone about this show. So another reason why this Mr. Olympia was a controversial one was the fact that in the years prior and in the years following Arnold Schwarzenegger's retirement from competing at the Olympia, Arnold actually became a co-promoter of the Mr. Olympia competition with Jim Lorimer. So when the Olympia was being held in Columbus, Ohio, where the Arnold Classic is now held, Arnold and Jim Lorimer were partners in promoting the Mr. Olympia in the late 1970s. So in the years that Frank Zane was winning, in the years that the Sandow Trophy was first introduced as a prize for the Mr. Olympia, those were the years that Arnold was actually a promoter of the Olympia. So it also rubbed a lot of people the wrong way that Arnold went from being a promoter back to being a competitor. Um, and we talk about politics and bodybuilding a lot. And this is a prime example of where a lot of people believe that politics and bodybuilding were the reason why Arnold won. The fact that he was a promoter of the show. He was close to all the judges. He was close to the promotion. He was close to everybody in bodybuilding. He had already became somewhat of a star Certainly in bodybuilding, he was becoming a star in Hollywood, but in bodybuilding at the time, he was already the biggest star in bodybuilding, but everybody thought he was retired. Now, another reason why the result of this competition was controversial, obviously Arnold won the 1980 Mr. Olympia. A lot of people felt this was one of the worst versions of Arnold that we had ever seen on the Olympia stage. Now, this was due to a lot of reasons, the fact that he retired and took a step back, certainly downsizing for a lot of the roles that he had in Hollywood between 75 and 1980, um, but also the fact that due to filming constraints, he was actually filming Conan the Barbarian. He only prepped for this Olympia for eight weeks, and he claims like diet and training and everything, only eight weeks for this Mr. Olympia was the entirety of his preparation, which as many of you know, is a very, very short time for a bodybuilder to prep for a show, let alone to prep for the Mr. Olympia after being retired for four or five years. And then to win that Mr. Olympia is a pretty extreme accomplishment. Now, it wasn't just the crowd or the other competitors or many bodybuilding fans that thought the outcome of this competition was controversial. The 1980 Mr. Olympia was actually originally supposed to be aired on television um, and after the result of this show, and after the reaction that fans, bodybuilders, and the crowd seemed to have, suddenly the decision was made for this not to be aired on television. The outcome of this competition was deemed a controversial outcome, and many say that's why this never ended up being aired on TV. And of course, there was also the fact that if you look back at some of the photos of Arnold in these lineups, um, a lot of people say that Arnold was hitting poses that only highlighted his strongest body parts, which would be fine in an open posing routine. Um, but this was during the mandatories. Um, in the lineup, Arnold would hit poses that he felt were best for him when other guys were not hitting these poses. And there are photos of this happening, specifically shots of his arms. Um, his arms still look pretty good at this Olympia. Um, if we compare his physique here to past Mr. Olympia's, 
you can definitely make the argument that 1980 was not the best version of Arnold Schwarzenegger that we've ever seen. Um, from a conditioning standpoint, he wasn't as conditioned as he usually is. From a size standpoint, he wasn't as muscular as he usually is. Uh, but one of Arnold's trademark poses is anything with his biceps. His bicep peaks have always been some of the most incredible biceps in bodybuilding. And as you can see in many of these photos, he certainly took the time and the opportunities um, to highlight that strong point. So we've talked a lot about Arnold Schwarzenegger so far in this video, but I want to talk about some of the other competitors because I think they're a very important aspect of the controversial elements of this Olympia. Um, so going into this Olympia, the year prior in 1979, you had Frank Zane win the 79 Mr. Olympia. So going into 1980, Frank Zane was the returning defending champion. Frank Zane had won the under 200 category at the Olympia the year prior, and Mike Menser had won the heavyweight category the over 200 at the Olympia the year prior. So going into 1980, Mike Menser and Frank Zane were really the two favorites to win. Many people felt that in 79, the decision between Mike and Frank was actually very close. And some people felt that Mike should have actually won the 1979 Mr. Olympia. Um, so I think that's important to understand is that going into this, Mike and Frank were two of the favorites here. But when you look at the actual outcome, it wasn't anything close to that. Now, it is worth mentioning that Frank Zane was injured going into the 1980 Mr. Olympia, so that could have played a part in why he didn't maybe look as good as he could have. But still, when we look at the placings here, he didn't place nearly where people expected him to. In fact, I think Chris Diggerson surprised a lot of people by taking second here. So let's go ahead and actually look at these placings. And I think another interesting thing to make note of here is the total prize money awarded at the 1980 Mr. Olympia was $50,000. $25,000 going to the winner, Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is a far cry from today, where the total prize money for the Olympia, I believe, is in excess of a million dollars in the men's open. Um, in the first place last year, uh, got $400,000. Second place got $150,000. Third place got $100,000, um, and so on. All the way up to 10th place, getting $16,000. So let's go ahead and take a look at the top six of the 1980 Mr. Olympia. Taking first place, you had Arnold Schwarzenegger. Taking second place, you had Chris Dickerson. Taking third, you had the defending Mr. Olympia champion, Frank Zane. Tying for fourth and fifth and ending up taking the fourth place spot was Boyer Co. and Mike Menzer. So Boyer took fourth and Mike Menzer took fifth. And Roger Walker took sixth. And keep in mind, you know, this Olympia was a very stacked Olympia lineup for that time. 16 total competitors placing outside of the top six. You had legends like Tom Platts, Danny Padilla, Ed Corney, Casey Vieter, Samir Banut, Ken Waller, Dennis Tinarino, Roy Callender. I mean, just bodybuilding golden era legends in this lineup. And 16 was a pretty deep Olympia, um, especially considering some of the Olympias prior. Um, even some Olympias in the 70s where there was only one competitor. There was an Olympia that Arnold Schwarzenegger won just him. He was the only competitor at that, that Olympia. I believe it was 1971. So for the time, this was a stacked Mr. Olympia lineup. So let's talk about these placings a little bit more. So Mike Menser taking fifth here. Again, Mike Menser and Frank Zane were pretty much the two favorites going into this show before anybody knew that Arnold was competing. Mike Menser took fifth. Again, only 29 years old. Um, and Mike Menser, this competition was pretty much the end of Mike Menser's bodybuilding career. At the age of 29 years old, having won the heavyweight division the year prior at 28 years old, Mike Menser was one of the top bodybuilders in the world and one of the top prospects um, as far as bodybuilding potential goes. So the fact that his career ended with this competition um, surprised a lot of people because many people expected Mike Menser to go on and continue competing and win the Olympia. Mike Menser was, he was one of the top bodybuilders in the world and one of the favorites really to win this show. So in the years that followed, Mike Menser was really one of the most outspoken about this competition, claiming it was rigged until the day that Mike died. He was extremely, extremely disenfranchised with the outcome of this show, disenfranchised with the IFBB. Um, and I believe he held a pretty negative opinion of Arnold Schwarzenegger um, all the way up until the end. Now, Mike Menser wasn't the only competitor that was disappointed with this result. Chris Dickerson, who took second, reportedly jumped off stage and yelled that he could not believe it um, in response to this result. According to people who were there, Frank Zane actually went backstage and smashed his trophy up against the wall. 
and following the competition. And the reason why this is viewed as, you know, one of the most controversial Olympias is because historically something like this has actually never happened. Uh, many of the competitors after this competition vowed to boycott the Mr. Olympia the following year in 1981, including Frank Zane, who is a former Mr. Olympia, Boyer Co., Mike Menser, and of course, Roger Walker. And all of them actually stuck to that boycott in 1981, except for Roger Walker. So Boyer Co., Mike Menser, and Frank Zane, all of them held out and didn't compete in 1981. And we're going to talk about the 1981 Mr. Olympia in another video because that was probably the second most, if not arguably, what could be the most controversial Mr. Olympia in history. So that is the story of the 1980 Mr. Olympia, the seventh and final Olympia won by Arnold Schwarzenegger, arguably one of the most, if not the most, controversial Mr. Olympia in history. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one and for more Olympia coverage just like this. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.